Allen Edmonds is currently having their Rediscover America sale for this year, 2024. It's typically between $100 and $150 off the shoe's regular retail price. Today, we're gonna to see what these deals look like, as well as discuss what might be the best overall value for you. But first, very briefly, let's take a quick look at the Allen Edmonds shoes and boots that I currently own. First shoe, McAllister Wingtip Oxford in Dark chili. Glued a rubber top sole on the bottom so I don't have to worry about wearing them in the rain or walking through wet cement. Full brogue wingtip closed lacing system. Absolutely beautiful design. My favorite shoe in terms of looks but when it comes to comfort not the best. What is the best in comfort is going to be the Allen Edmonds Dalton wingtip dress boots. Again, in dark chili, my favorite color. Sadly, they discontinued this boot, which is a shame since this is the most comfortable pair of Allen Edmonds that I've ever had. But something to take note of, a lot of the comfort from this boot comes from that double leather outsole. Third pair, Higgins Mill boot in brown chrome XL. This is the original boot, the non-waterproof one. This one came out in 2016. I actually bought this one in 2016, got it rehealed once, and then I had the whole sole and heel done again. And after all that, the boots are still going strong. They're still holding up an absolutely amazing boot. Shoe number four is gonna be another pair of the Higgins Mill boot. However, this is their new updated model, brown chrome XL waterproof version or water resistant version. These seem to have better breathability. I find that these boots actually work better in slightly warmer clients since my feet don't overheat. So overall, this is the more useful boot. And now let's take a look at the sale. All right, just taking a look at the Allen Edmonds home screen right now. Save up to 40%, rediscover America sale. It looks like they're really pushing the casual fashion sneakers, if you would. I'm not really into that. If you are, I'm sure they're okay, but I like their regular shoes. Let's see what they've got for their dress shoes since that's what they're most known for. All right, looks like those are the reserve ones. We went over that a little while ago. All right, couple of options. This is the one I want to take a look at. Park Avenue Capto Oxford dress shoe. This is their most famous shoe. This is the first pair of shoes that I bought from them. I actually got rid of mine just because they were the wrong size and I was waiting a long time to actually replace them. But for me, I don't wear black dress shoes at all. If you're looking for a pair of dress shoes that you can wear to weddings, you can wear to interviews, and you know it's all gonna be appropriate, the Park Avenue in black is going to be a great option for just about anyone starting out. You could also get it in a couple of different leathers, it looks like. Here is the dark chili. It actually looks a little bit, it looks a little bit darker than the dark chili that I'm used to. This dark chili, this is this is more of a this is more of a reddish dark chili, a reddish brown. This dark chili that they have on the website looks like it's a bit more of a medium brown. I really like the mahogany leather here. It, it's just a really nice deep brown. It's got some three-dimensional look to it. All right, price usually $4.25 down to $3.29. So what is that? $4.25 to $3.29.96. Oh, it says it right here. I didn't even see it. I was just doing math just for the hell of doing math. This is a pretty decent value. This is a really good first shoe. If you're looking for a shoe that you can dress all the way up to very formal situations, the black cap toe Oxford is going to be awesome. But the issue that I personally have with these is that they are Oxfords. Let me show you. I'll put it in a brighter color so I could show you. The Oxfords actually, this open uh, clothes lacing, I mean. If you have a higher instep, you might get some discomfort around here just because you can't make this as tight as possible since it's a clothes lacing system. But if you leave it too loose, your foot's gonna be sloshing around in the front and it might just push up against the side, causing your small toes to hurt and it's gonna feel like the shoe is actually squeezing you. Value, this is a pretty decent value. It's not the best value, but I would say it definitely is pretty decent. If you've been looking for a pair of Capto Oxford shoes, Park Avenue, Avenues, now is a great time to pick them up. Now here we have the Park Avenue Capto Derby dress shoe, right? Let's take a look. I'll put them in a brighter color so it's a bit easier for you to see. Open lacing system, Derby. That means you're going to be able to cinch these down nice and tight. You're going to get a good closure around your ankle, but it's not going to cause as much comfort if you do have higher insteps, higher arches like I do. Of course, black leather looks really nice. Dark chili looks absolutely sick. And again, I really, really like that deep brown. That mahogany color just looks really, really good. It's deep. It's, I mean, look at that. Look at how good that looks. I'm, I'm a sucker for those 
deep brown shoes. Now, this shoe being a derby and not an Oxford actually means you can't dress it up quite quite as formally as the Oxford since it's that open lacing system. Nowadays, 2024, I don't think anyone's gonna go to you and say, you've got the wrong lacing system on your shoe. You can't go to this event. I don't know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. But also you're gonna be able to dress these down a lot more, especially if you get them in one of the brown leathers like mahogany or dark chili. The reason for that is when compared to a closed lacing Oxford shoe, this is gonna pair a lot better with a pair of dark wash denim or a pair of casual khaki colored chinos. Now, one thing that does concern me here is this cap right here, the stitching right here is pretty far back. Usually the shoe is going to bend right here and it doesn't look great when the bend happens in front of the stitching for the cap toe. You always want the bend to happen in the back of the cap toe. Let me show you what I mean here. See how when I bend the boot like that, the crease is happening directly behind the stitching for the cap toe, not in front. It's not happening up here. It's happening back here. That's typically what you want when you're wearing a cap toe shoe or a cap toe boot. And just looking at where they decided to place the stitch for the cap toe on this particular shoe, I wish they placed it a bit further up. It looks like it's going to either crease right at the stitch or right in front of the stitch. Now here's the Park Avenue Oxford. You see how that stitch is a bit further up. So this is going to crease properly. It's not going to make the cap toe portion of the shoe looking all wrinkly. Price is the same for the Derby as the Oxford 329. You're saving $96, but these are gonna be the better value just because they're gonna be more comfortable and you're gonna be able to dress them down a lot easier than that Oxford. All right, now onto a shoe that is a significantly better value than the Park Avenue Oxford or Derby's, the Fifth Avenue Cap Toe Oxford shoe. Now right off the bat, this is probably the best value dress shoe that you can get. Maybe the best value shoe overall, boots included from Allen Edmonds. It's because you're getting such a good shoe shoe at a fraction of the cost of what you normally pay. I will say these are typically on sale. I don't know why they do that. They, they always mark these as a value option. $350 they usually go for, but they keep the price there and they scratch it off. That's just, that's sales and marketing. I get it. It's like the one day sale that always seems to end and then it just starts up again the next day. But overall, this is a really nice looking shoe. I had this shoe a couple of years ago, I did a video, it's still getting views. I talked about this shoe and the McAllister wingtip, how dress shoes should fit. I think I sized these wrong. I think they were 11 and a half D and I should have gotten 11 and a half E because what ended up happening to, for me with these shoes is they started to get very tight around here. I'm not sure why that was. I didn't have any shoe stretches at the time, so I didn't I didn't do any of that. Of course, we've also got the Strand Capto Oxford shoe. This was one of their most popular shoes years ago. I actually wear a pair of walnut strands that I had for a while, wore them to my wedding. I really enjoyed wearing them, but I'm always trying to pare my items down and get rid of things and just be more and more minimal. So I just decided to get rid of them since they were just a bit too loud to wear all the time. Sometimes they were great, but not all the time. The one thing I wanna mention when talking about the Strand Park Avenues and the Fifth Avenues, both the Strand and the Park Avenue actually look really well balanced. The Strand, you can see we have a good amount of broguing right here. We have some broguing back here. We have a medallion right here. Looks very well balanced. Taking a look at the Park Avenue in the walnut just so that you can see the detail. Same thing, looks very well balanced. We have the single stitching here, single stitching there, right? Single stitching for this one, very nice, very well balanced. Taking a look at the strand of the same color, broguing up top, broguing in the back, broguing all around the shoe, right? Nothing crazy. Let's take a look at, that's a nice picture. Look at this brown one right here. Brogue, 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 brogues all over the place. Taking a look at the Fifth Avenue, however, broguing on the toe cap, but no medallion, but just very plain back here. Very plain. So this can make the Fifth Avenue look a little bit less balanced than the Park Avenues or the Strands. Now the Fifth Avenue is the better value since you're going for $249, whereas the Parks are gonna be $329 and the Strand is going to be $329 as well. But if that unbalanced look bothers you, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Finally, let's take a look at the McAllister Wingtip Oxford, the one that I actually have. Here it is right here. Originally 425, marked down to 299. This is a better value, slightly better value than the Park Avenues and the Strands, but it's not going to be as cheap as the Fifth Avenue. It looks like this one only comes in three colors. You've got all black, you've got walnut, and you've got dark chili. 
Dark Chili is my favorite color for this shoe in particular. And as I said before a couple of times, I really, really enjoy all of that heavy broguing that you see on the shoe. It just looks really well balanced, really, really good, very, very nice detail on this shoe. Now this shoe is gonna be more versatile than the Strand or the Park Avenues because it being a wingtip means you're gonna be able to wear it with jeans or casual chinos a lot easier since the more decoration you have on a shoe, the less casual it is. But you can still wear it with a suit since it is an Oxford dress shoe. It's just not going to be quite as dressy and as formal as the Park Avenue Capto Oxford, which is nice and plain, no decoration at all. Now you could also get this shoe in black, meaning you're gonna be able to dress it up more than if you got it in dark chili or a walnut. Black wingtip shoes are a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit weird. Shoe's still quite expensive just for a black dress shoe. I would always say go with the dark chili for the McAllister wingtip. It's just hands down the best color for this shoe. So if you're like me and wingtips are your favorite style of dress shoes, now is a great time for you to pick up a pair of these. And I have had a lot of shoes come and go in my wardrobe. The McAllister in Dark Chili has withstood the test of time. Now in the past eight or so years that I've known about and been wearing Allen Edmonds, I've bought and sold many different pairs. This is the only pair that has consistently had a spot in my wardrobe just because it's such a nice wingtip and that color is absolutely awesome. All right, those are their four main classic dress shoes that most people think about when they think Allen Edmonds. What about the comfort? I've said many times that the McAllister is not the most comfortable, nor is the Park Avenue, Fifth Avenue, or Strand. Now, I've tried a couple of these shoes before with the Day-Night Rubber Outsole. While I really, really like the idea of the Day-Night Outsole, just something about the Oxford, something about the regular dress shoe with a Day-Night Sole, it, it just didn't feel comfortable. It didn't bend properly, and when it did, it was really digging into the top of my foot right here. It just didn't feel good. It felt like the shoe was too bottom heavy and my feet would actually hurt a lot sooner than if I was just wearing the classic single leather outsole like this. But the single outsole is not super comfortable either. Let's see if we could do anything about that. Customize your shoe right here. All right, we're gonna let it load. Let's go ahead and select. All right, here's the part that I wanted to see. We have the single oak leather. We've got the butyl sole, which is just a bit more water resistant. Double butyl sole. This is the comfortable sole. Remember at the beginning of the video, I talked about this double sole on the Dalton dress boot is a big part of why it is so comfortable. The sole on this boot is the exact same sole that you're seeing on the screen right now. So that's a really great option that they're allowing us to put custom soles on our shoes. Of course, we have to create an entirely custom shoe, but hey, it is what it is. Double random box sole, that's pretty cool. Single random box. I would always go with double sole. It just a lot more comfortable. I did hear that the Rendenbach tannery is closing, so we might not be seeing the Rendenbach soles for a long time. Be that as it may, it looks like it's still an option here. I am very satisfied with the double butyl sole, and you could also play around. You can get different style day-night soles if you so choose. Again, I'm not a big fan of the day-night, but you might be. So let's see, add to cart. So if you do take this route, you're gonna have to wait eight weeks and you're not gonna get any types of sale prices. So there's no rush to do something like this. And let's also take a look and see if some other shoes come with that double sole. We've got a Drake Derby shoe right here. It looks like it's, looks like it's not discontinued. Nice thick rubber sole looks like, or it looks like it's a double leather sole, but then when you look over here, it's a rubber sole. This is a pretty decent option. Looks a little bit chunkier, but you'd be able to dress this up. Maybe not with a suit, but looks pretty decent. $250, that's actually pretty decent. I don't have any experience with this shoe, but you get it in black, you get it in mahogany. To me, this mahogany looks red on this shoe, but regardless, this one looks pretty decent. Only a few left, maybe maybe they are discontinued. And yeah, that's the only one that I see that has the double sole. So they're not putting the double sole in a lot of shoes for some reason. All right, let's see what they got for boots. Of course, the Dalton, discontinued, unfortunately, sadly. If you got a pair, great. If you can find a pair, awesome. But yeah, super awesome boot. This one usually went for $300 during this sale, but too bad, so sad. They no longer make it anymore. Chelsea boot looks pretty decent. 500 marked down to 400. If you're into Chelsea boots, I'm not into Chelsea boots, but some of you, I know a lot of you are. Chili, espresso. The espresso leather is pretty interesting. Someone mentioned in the comments that a big part why they don't like Chelsea boots is this elastic piece right here. I can agree with that. I just don't love the plain toe look of Chelsea's right here. 
But if you go with the espresso leather, it looks like you can't even really see the elastic. It just kind of blends in. Same thing with the black Chelsea. This, you know, a little bit or a lot more dressy than the other colors. And the suede looks pretty decent as well. But these do look actually pretty nice in the dark chili color. And it looks like they do put on a rubber add-on. So you're not just going to have to have that leather sole and go on Amazon and glue on your own. They actually do it for you, which is actually really nice. This chukka boot actually looks really nice. I like this antique leather, the way it's almost two-tone. Looks really good. Day-night sole, again, going to be really good. I like the day-night sole on boots. Very comfortable, very durable. Is it waterproof? No, I don't see anything about it being waterproof. One thing to be aware of with chukka boots is since you only have a couple of different eyelets, like right here, they only have two eyelets, you might have issues with not being able to tighten it enough around your ankle area and your foot's going to be sloshing around in there and just pushing up against the outside of outside of the boot. And it's going to feel like your smaller toe is going to be pinched. That's happened to me in a couple of different chukka boots before. That's just something to keep in mind. So I would definitely have to try these on before just ordering them sight unseen. Park Avenue dress boot. That one looks pretty nice. I'm sure it's very high quality. Don't love the Oxford style clothes lacing boot though. Hamilton weatherproof dress boots. These, let's take a look at these. It's nice that they're actually weatherproof. That means that it's almost like a, a weatherproof dress shoe. Originally $4.95 marked down to $3.49. That's a pretty hefty savings. Pretty good. Pretty good. If, if this is something that you've been looking at, you can get it in chili. You can get it in brown. Actually, the chili for this one looks the best. This one looks really good. Honestly, looks really good. I not 100% on the closed lacing boots. If this was an open lacing boot, that would be really good. But if anyone has this shoe, if anyone has this boot, let me know in the comments. How do they fit? Are they comfortable? This one looks like it's, it'd be pretty good. For me, I'd have to see how easy it would be to put the boots on and off. And of course, how good of a fit I can get with that closed lacing system. All right, taking a look at the Higgins Mill weatherproof boot. Looks like it is $116 off. Pretty good, pretty good. This is a very good value. You can definitely dress this boot up a lot more than other boots like the Red Wing Iron Ranger, the Wolverine 1000 Mile. Just a lot nicer of a shape. It's not as bulbous and big as those other workwear and style boots. And I'm not really someone that loves plain toe boots. Part of the reason why I don't like Chelsea boots, but this is the one plain toe boot that I actually enjoy wearing. And the fact that it's comfortable, it's weatherproof, just makes it a great value. Now you're not going to be able to dress this one up to more than a casual suit or more than just, let's say, a sport coat, a nice pair of khakis or gray chinos in the winter, but it's still a great option for casual and semi-formal wear. At $379, it is quite a bit of money for this boot, but this boot is probably the most versatile boot you can get. So I would say if you've got the money and you want to get a pair of Higgins Mill, this is a great time to get one. Now, here is the boot that I was looking at. I saw this boot about a year or maybe two years ago in a store in New York City, an Allen Evans store. And I've got to say, it looked really, really nice in person. Really nice, deep brown, just felt good. The quality is there. So this is the boot that I actually am waiting to pick up. Not sure if I'm going to get it this year just because this doesn't really fit into my budget and I don't really need another pair of boots. If anything, I need to get rid of some boots. But out of all the boots and shoes that we've talked about so far, this is my number one pick. Now this boot does look just about as dressy as the Dalton wingtip. Maybe not quite as much, but 90% there. Looks a lot more dressy than the Higgins Mill. And I'm pretty sure it's normal calfskin leather. It's not that Chrome XL leather which is going to look pretty worn out pretty fast. But what makes these boots stand out to me is the amount of versatility and the amount of outfits you're going to be able to wear these boots with. It's essentially a cap toe dress boot. So if you wear them with a pair of pants, it's going to look just like a cap toe dress shoe. But with that day night sole, you're going to get a lot more weather resistance since it's already rubber. You don't have to worry about adding your rubber and you're also going to get amazing comfort with them as well. Not to mention calfskin leather typically breathes better than the Chrome XL leather, and they probably feel very close to the Dalton wingtip, which just means you're going to be able to wear them deeper into the warmer months during the summertime. Price, originally $495, marked down to $349. You're saving $146. About $150 is going into your pocket for these. So if I could find the budget and space for these in my wardrobe, I will pull the trigger on them. Last, I want to talk about the Reserve Collection. We did a video on this a while ago. It looks like you guys really enjoyed them. One that I was looking at was the Reserve Wingtip Derby Dress Shoe. A couple of things about this one. It is a wingtip, which I really like. 
it is a long wing brogue so you could see the way the stitching goes all the way around let me put it in a different color so you could see better yeah uh, you can't see much better see the way that stitching goes all the way around the shoe around the back of the shoe and typically long wings are big and chunky but these look pretty decent plus since it's an open lacing shoe it means you're going to get a much better cinch down fit while still having room up in the top and that double leather sole that they come with means that the comfort is going to be absolutely awesome just like the dalton wingtip dress boot but it looks like they're still charging two arms and two legs, not just one arm and two legs. $800 for a single pair of shoes is a lot of money. I don't care how nice the shoes are. It's a lot of money to drop on a pair of shoes, but there's no rush on getting these since they're not on sale. So if you really want a nicer pair of the reserve shoes, just save your money and wait till you could actually afford it. But from a finance perspective, if you really want a pair of these shoes, but you're actually starting to think about getting the cheaper ones that are on sale, like the Park Avenues, the Strands, the McAllisters, or any of the other shoes or boots that we talked about, it's probably better for you to just continue to save your money and get the shoe that you actually want. Since if you buy a cheaper pair, it's just gonna be pushing this shoe further and further away from you and you're never gonna stop wanting the one that you actually want. And that principle doesn't apply to just shoes. It pretty much goes for anything that you use as a tool, bicycles, cameras, watches, glasses, Many times I've made the mistake of getting the cheaper option first only to still be wanting it and six months later having to reach into my pocket again to buy the nicer version. Meaning I had to buy the cheaper one that let's say is $400 and then six months later I'm spending $800 bringing it to a grand total of now $1,200 whereas if I just bought the one that I wanted in the first place it would have been more money per unit but I would have been satisfied 100% from the start. Now hopefully you can relate to that story and it helps you making better purchasing decisions going forward. All right, so which shoes would I actually get since I already have four shoes from Allen Edmonds? Well, I alluded to this before, but the only one that I could see myself possibly pulling the trigger on would be the Landon cap toe boot. Just the fact that it's super versatile, you could dress it up, dress it down, it's weatherproof, weatherproof, it's not actually a weatherproof leather, but it does have that day-night rubber outsole, meaning that if it rains, no problem, no worries about the leather sole getting all destroyed. It's nice sleek profile with that cap toe design means you're gonna be able to dress it up all the way up to a suit. No pull tab here for your suit pants to get caught on, which is absolutely awesome. Standard calfskin leather means it's going to be more breathable for wearing deeper into the summertime. And you're just getting a lot with this boot. Even at $500, the full retail price or $495 to be exact, still a really good value because you could just do so much with it. And that mahogany color looks absolutely beautiful in real life. Now let's say hypothetically that you have no dress shoes, no dress boots at all, but you like Allen Edmonds just because you find them very accessible with all their retail stores and they do make a pretty decent product. And you're willing to spend good money, but you don't wanna buy things that are just gonna sit on the shelf or you're gonna get tired of after the first year or two wearing them. Well, if that were me, this is what I would be looking at. Number one, I would seriously consider getting the Park Avenue Cap Toe Derby style dress shoe. I like the mahogany brown the best. You're gonna be able to dress this one up, but still dress it down since it's that nice brown color. Now, if you wanna take this up to as formal as you can go, you can definitely get this one in black. It's gonna make it a lot more dressy. The black color is gonna be a lot harder to wear in more casual situations, especially if you're thinking of wearing these with jeans. So just look at what your real life use case is and whether the black shoe or the brown shoe is going to work out better for you. Odds are, unless you're buying these to wear in a very formal environment five days a week, or you like to wear all black all the time, the brown color is gonna work better for you in most situations. Now, why the Derby and not the Oxford? Well, simple, the Derby is gonna be a lot more versatile since you're gonna be able to wear it with more casual pants like jeans or khaki chinos, and it's also gonna be easier to get a more secure, comfortable fit meaning the shoe is gonna be overall more comfortable, which is definitely something you're gonna need since this one only comes with a single layer leather outsole, which is not uncomfortable by any means, but it's not going to be anywhere near the comfort of that double leather sole that comes on the Dalton or some of the more expensive reserve options. But you could slap on a nice cheap pair of self-adhesive rubber top soles on these shoes. You're gonna get a bit better comfort and you're also not gonna to have to worry about shredding your soles in the wet weather. Second pair of shoes I would look at, Landon Capto 
dress boot in mahogany brown leather. Dress it up, dress it down. It's not gonna make your feet overheat in the summer months. And you've got that nice day night rubber outsole for those wet weather fall and winter months. Now you can stop right there with these two shoes, the Park Avenue Derby and the Landon Capto. If you get them both in the same color, they're gonna be very interchangeable with your wardrobe. You can get the same belt that's gonna match both of them. And bonus is when you are wearing dress shoes all the time, you really should put shoe trees in them and only wear them every other day. So you're gonna be able to just rotate these in and out. Now, if you wanna add a third pair of dress shoes into your collection, this is where you can get something a little bit more fun. It's really up to you if you wanna get a pair of penny loafers, you wanna get a pair of bit loafers, a pair of double monk straps, really up to you. Since I like the wingtips, I would strongly consider getting the McAllister, the McAllister, not the McAllister, in the dark chili, the ones that I already have. This is a hypothetical saying that I don't, we don't have any dress shoes, so what we get as our third shoe. And this would be my pick for that third, more fun style dress shoe, especially in dark chili. I really like the way this shoe looks. Now, I would not get in at Walnut. It's too bright for me. Black is okay if you want to, but at this point, just go with the brown dress shoes that we talked about already, the Brown Park Avenues. Black wingtips are just kind of weird. You, they got all this detail and you really can't see them, so get them if you want, but for my third pair of shoes, I personally get something a bit more fun. But I do want to mention, I wouldn't just pull the trigger on these right away. Since they are in Oxford style and they do have that single leather outsole, meaning they're not really going to be as comfortable as they could be if they had a double sole or the open lacing system. So I would really think about, should I spend 300 on this or should I just put that 300 towards the reserve wingtip derby dress shoes? I don't love the price of these. The only reason I'd be looking at these is because they've got that double sole right here. So super comfortable. And they've also got that open lacing derby system right there. So the shoes are gonna be miles better in terms of comfort than the McAllister. Although at the current price, you could buy two and a half McAllisters for one of the reserve collection. So that's it. That's this year's Allen Edmonds Rediscover America sale. I am filming this video on Tuesday, October 8th. So depending on when this gets put up, I'm gonna try to put this up by the end of this week. So hopefully you'll see it by October 10th. But depending on when you're actually watching this video, that sale may be long gone. They may have another one coming in December, 2024. But again, if you're watching this sometime in 2025, you're gonna to have to wait a whole other year for the sale to come back. But keep in mind everything we talked about when you're looking at shoes, you're looking at boots, really think about what is your real world use case for today? Not tomorrow, not next year. What you can use and what you like today and just try to make good purchasing decisions. Since in my experience, it's always better to buy the item that you really want or the better item at full price than the cheaper version or a knockoff version just because it's half the price of the one that you really want. So I hope this helped. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. As always, thanks for watching.